Welcome to the Design Fusion Solid Edge blog. This is part two of a three part series on weldments in Solid Edge. Part two introduces you to the three weld bead commands. As mentioned in part one of this blog series, you can construct fillet welds, groove welds, and stitch welds, which are illustrated on this slide. In this blog, we'll look at each of these commands. The fillet command constructs a fillet weld between two sets of faces that you select. For best results, the first set of faces should be perpendicular to or nearly perpendicular to the second set of faces. This slide lists the basic steps to construct a fillet weld. I will demonstrate this shortly. Some additional information regarding fillet welds. A fillet weld feature is placed using the weld beads color. When you set the unequal setback options on the fillet weld options dialog box, you can also define a target face thickness value. Fillet welds are not combined with the parts they touch, and you can use the commands on the context toolbar and shortcut menu to edit, delete, suppress, and rename fillet weld features. Let's have a look at the fillet weld command in Solid Edge. Before demonstrating the fillet weld command, I must first mark the assembly as a weldment assembly. This was introduced in part one of this blog series. I can now select the fillet weld command, which launches the fillet weld option dialog box. I'll use the default option shown here. Next, I'll select the base face and accept it, and then I'll select the target face and accept it, and click Preview. Notice the results. Before I hit Finish, I'll go back to the Options dialog and change this to an unequal setback. Notice that I can change the target thickness value. I'll change this value to 10 and click OK. Notice the results of an unequal setback. I'll go back into the options and put this back to an equal setback option. Click OK and hit the finish button. I have my finished fillet weld feature which shows up under the assembly features in the pathfinder. If I right mouse button click, Notice that the context toolbar and shortcut menu allow me to edit, suppress, and rename the fillet weld feature. The groove weld command constructs a weld between two solid bodies. A groove weld is used to fill gaps between the faces you select. Lofting technology is used to calculate and construct the bead feature. The groove weld feature supports a wide variety of design scenarios. The orientation of the faces to be welded determines what level of input is required. The design scenario determines which of these listed types of input is needed. For simple design scenarios, a set of base faces and target faces provides enough information to construct the feature. For more complex scenarios, you may also need to define target edges and or base edges. This slide lists basic steps to create a groove weld. Keep in mind that steps 5 and 6 may not be necessary depending on the design scenario. I will demonstrate two design scenarios in a minute to show you how this works. Some additional information regarding groove welds. Some groove welds require that you also define base top path and bottom path edges. Groove weld features are not combined with the parts they touch and do not modify the input parts. You can use the material removal commands such as a cutout hole and revolve cutout to modify a groove weld feature. You can use the commands in the shortcut menu to edit, delete, suppress, and rename groove weld features. And you can control the shape and extent of a groove weld feature using the command bar. Let's have a look at the groove weld command in Solid Edge. 
I'll start with a simple groove weld example. I must first mark this as a weld mitt assembly. Next, I'll select the groove weld command. I'll just use the default options in these examples. Notice that the command bar expanded the select base face step and the base face option is active. I'll select this face as the base face and accept it. Now the select target face step expands and the target face option is active. I'll select this face as the target face and accept it. Notice that the preview button has appeared, so I'll click preview. I see the desired groove weld, so I'll click finish. Notice that the groove weld appears in the pathfinder under the assembly features header. If I right mouse button click, notice that the context toolbar and shortcut menu allow me to edit, suppress, and rename the groove weld feature. That was a simple example. Let's switch to a different assembly to look at a more complicated example. Notice that the end faces are different sizes and shapes and the edges are all on different planes. Once again, I must first mark this as a weld mint assembly. I'll select the groove weld command and use the default options. Next, I'll select the rectangular face as the base face and accept it. Then I'll select the oblong face as the target face and accept it. Notice that a preview button has not appeared and the target top path option is active. To select the target top path, I need to change my filter from chain to edge. Notice the larger point at the beginning of the edge line indicating the origin. I'll select the top edge and accept it. Now the target bottom path option is active. I'll select this bottom edge and accept it. Notice that the preview button appears. However, when I click it, I get an error message. I'll click OK to close the message and go back and expand the base face step on the vertical command bar. Here I'll define the top and bottom path for the base face using the same steps as I did for the target face. I'll click the preview button again, but I still get the error message. I'll click OK to close the message and go back and expand the extend step on the vertical command bar. Notice that N1 and N2 options are set to plane. Due to the shape, this is not possible. Let's change them to surface. I'll click preview and this time I get my groove weld bead. As you can see, this is one of the more complicated groove weld scenarios, but with a little patience and knowledge, I was able to generate a nice weld bead. The stitch weld command adds cutouts to an existing weld bead to create a set of intermittent weld beads. You can select an existing fillet or groove weld feature or a protrusion feature on which you added a weld label. This slide lists the basic steps to construct a stitch weld. To activate the stitch weld command, an existing weld bead feature must exist in the assembly. Some additional information regarding stitch welds. You create a stitch weld feature by modifying an existing fillet or groove weld feature or a protrusion feature on which you have added a weld label. Stitch welds are displayed using the weld beads color. Stitch weld features are not combined with the parts they touch. And you can use the commands on the shortcut menu to edit, delete, suppress, and rename stitch weld features. Depending on the options you set, you can specify the start offset length, bead length, gap length, and end offset length. Let's have a look at the stitch weld command in Solid Edge. To demonstrate the stitch weld command, I've returned to the fillet weld example from the first demonstration. I've already placed the weld bead, which has activated the stitch weld command. I'll select the command and set up the options. Here I'll select the stitches only option and set the gap and bead values to 10 millimeters. 
I'll click OK and select the edge of the part that the fillet weld was applied to and accept it. I then click Finish and you can see the results. To demonstrate another option, I'll right mouse button click on the Stitch feature in the Pathfinder and select the Edit Definition command. On the command bar, I'll click on the Options dialog button. I'll change the stitch type to stitches and offsets and apply a 5mm start and end offset. I'll click OK to accept these new settings and notice the resulting stitch weld bead. In part 3 of this series, we'll look at weld mints in the part and draft environment. Want to learn more? Please sign up to our customer portal at the website listed here where you have access to knowledge base articles, tips and tricks, how-to articles, and much more. If you need additional support, contact our support team at support at designfusion.com or call us at 1-877-215-1883.